We are very happy to count on the collaboration of Dr. Elena Wask, professor at the University of Girona and coordinator of UNICAM. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. I'm really glad to collaborate with this uh, uh, project, with the AgriCAM project, which is, I think, you know, a, um, a project of uh, undergraduate students that is, uh, I think, very interesting and, and challenging. To understand what biological control is, first we need to understand some basic concepts. What is a pest? Uh, this is a hand control growth of a living organism that is the next thing of a crop. How does a pest emerge? A pest emerge when an organism takes advantage of the unlimited fruit that a crop represents to it. We have said that pests are organisms that damage crops. Let's now think about the role of pests in natural ecosystems. Actually, in natural ecosystems there are no pests. In fact, they only occur when a new species is introduced, as Elena Wask explains us. But of course we may also have pests in nature. Yeah? I, make, uh, I can make an example. Rabbits, that we know that they are a common uh, herbivores in Europe. When the rabbits uh, uh, were introduced in Australia, they became a pest. And why do we talk, we talk about the pest? Because the rabbits are affecting not only crops, but also the natural systems. We may ask ourselves, why aren't there pests? in natural ecosystems? Well, this is because nature has some characteristics that agricultural fields lack. First, in nature there is a lot of diversity, which means that there are many species interacting. Second, there is competition for food, because resources are limited, so a new species cannot grow as much as it wants. Finally, there are natural predators, so if a species grows a lot, it's still controlled by its predators. What we have in nature is an equilibrium. Then the plants uh, grow as much as they, they can. The grazers try to eat the plants. The plants develop defenses. In nature there is this equilibrium. Then the plants have defenses uh, to cope with the grazers. The grazers also have the predators. And these equilibriums may maintain many species living at the same time with a growth that is, uh, 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 let's say, limited by these interactions. Therefore, as in nature there are no pests, making crops more similar to nature will make them more resistant to pests. To achieve diversity, some investigations have shown that crops mixing more than one species are less exposed to pests. Another very interesting way to control pests that imitates nature is biological control, which is the main topic of this video that we will now address. So first of all, what is biological control? Biological control is a method of controlling pests such as insects and plant disease using other organisms and natural enemies. We will now see an example of biological control. One of the most common pests are Lepidopterans, an order of insects that includes butterflies and moths. These insects affect almost all cultivated plants. During their caterpillar stage, they eat the leaves and reproduce very fast, becoming a pest that causes a lot of damage. Recently, many investigations have shown that this pest can be controlled with bats. Bats normally eat bugs, including Lepidopterans. Hence, if bats eat them, they control the population, so Lepidopterans don't become a pest. 
we think this might be interesting to apply in Cambodia because bats are a local species here and there are actually many bats around the fields, as you can see in this video of the bats cave in Batambang. The following table compares chemical control, the use of pesticides, and biological control. Looking at the success ratio, we see that when using biological control, more attempts are successful. Looking at the developmental cost and the benefit cost ratio, we see that biological control is much cheaper to develop and leads to higher profits. Finally, biological control solves the main three problems of pesticides. The risk of the pest becoming resistant, the lack of specificity, and the several harmful side effects. The students of UBB have concluded that the advantages of biological control are the following. Biological control is cheaper than pesticide. Costs are reduced. Biological control is more specific. Only the desired insect is killed. Pests don't become resistant to natural predator. Biology control does not generate chemical residues and respectful with the environment. In addition, it can never have a negative impact on human health. So, if the production is respectful with the environment and not dangerous for human health, we can label our product as a green product. This means that we will have all the economic advantages that you can check in the video, in the real product video, including higher profits. Even though evidence shows that biological control is much better than chemical control, it still has some disadvantages that must be taken into consideration. Biological control can be unpredictable, you cannot know 100% sure how the predators are going to act. To implement biological controls, we must need training. Another disadvantage is that the pest cannot be completely exterminated, because this would leave the natural predators without any food supplies. Hence, the aim here is to reach a balance such that the pest doesn't cause damage to the crops, but still some individuals are left, so the predators can eat them and the population of predators is maintained. Research must be done to make sure that the natural predator does not affect on species a part of the pest. It is more important if the reductor is not a local species. Uh, I can make an example. Uh, I don't know if you know what mo mosquito fish is. Mosquito fish is a small uh, uh, fish that uh, uh, eats uh, the larvae of mosquito. Then it, it may seem to be a great idea to control mosquitoes using mosquito fish. Uh, mosquito fish is uh, uh, original, uh, original from uh, the north of America, and it was introduced to Europe for the control of mosquitoes. It worked pretty well, but uh, what happened with this mosquito fish? This mosquito fish finally uh, became an invasive species and has affected the natural ecosystems because it has influenced the, uh, or affected the, the natural uh, fish of, of the system. And finally, the, it was not so good controlling the pest, but uh, it was bad for the ecosystem. Now that we have understood biological control, let's see the steps we should follow to implement it in Cambodia. Obviously, the first step is to identify the pest, to know which species is causing damage to the crops. Then, we need to think about its natural predators. As Elena was told us, it's very important that the natural predator is a local species. Once we have chosen it, it's time to investigate to design the application plan. 
before developing it in real agriculture fields, we will need to test our plan in a greenhouse. If it works, all we have left to do is convince the farmers.